Now let's take a look at the seaweed. So they're a macro algae and they're classified into three major groups. There's the red algae, which is your dolls, your nori, your larva. Um, that's not an exhaustive list. These are just some of the key ones. There's the brown algae, so kelp, bladderwrack, wakami, green algae, sea lettuce, spongeweed. Then there's also other types. So there's the blue green algae, which we'll look at shortly, which is the spirulina and chlorella. Now, from an energetics perspective, seaweeds are cooling and they moisten dryness. So clinically, what you might see if one, we've already looked at those kind of heat signs, so the inflammation, the redness, irritability kind of aspects, but the dryness, so it might be dry skin, dry mucous membranes, you know, burning sinuses, burning urinary tract. So, so that would be a real sort of um, heat, excess heat and dry type scenario. So that's where your seaweeds can be lovely. Where you would go a little more carefully is in a client presenting with that kind of dampness or excess moisture. And you know, a big feature there can be the sort of fluid retention and the puffiness. But sometimes it's about balancing out one food with another. So energetically cooling and moistens. Now seaweeds are really rich in nutrients, but there's a couple I'd like to highlight. Iodine, seaweeds are one of your best sources of iodine. And we'll talk about the importance of that a little bit more shortly. Another one I'd really like to highlight is vitamin B12. In particular, nori is a really good plant source or algal source of vitamin B12. So this is a really good thing to remember for, well, for all your clients, but for your vegan vegetarian clients. And, and you know, to be honest, we, I think we're all sort of aware that, that B12 can be one of the hardest things to get in a plant-based diet. Well, one of the few things that is more difficult to get in a plant-based diet, but actually increasingly we're seeing B12 deficiency in, in people who eat meat. And part of that problem traces back to the things like antibiotics, etc., cetera, that, that animals might be given, um, which can in fact affect their own production of B12. So you can't always guarantee on, on your sort of meat or flesh-based foods as being a good source of B12. So regardless, you've got a client who has signs of low B12, their nori is a fantastic source. Seaweeds are also a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. So we'll take a closer look at them. So let's take a look at some of our benefits and clinical applications of seaweed. And, you know, again, I think antioxidant, anti-inflammatory feature in just about every food, probably all the foods we cover today. But indeed, seaweed does have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Now, one thing is that the seaweeds have been shown to reduce the production of inflammatory proteins. So things like NF-kappa B, uh, cyclooxygenase 2. So these are, are sort of inflammatory pathways that can generate an awful lot of inflammation in the body. So dampening that down is really important. Um, I guess I should distinguish here too that there is of course a purpose to acute inflammation, but what we're seeing more and more is the states of chronic inflammation that are causing an awful lot of health problems. So it, it doesn't matter where inflammation is in the body, if it, it's going beyond serving its, its purpose as being an acute response, then it starts to cause tissue damage. So, you know, heart disease, you start to get damage to the arterial walls, arthritis, you start to get a breakdown of the tissue structures in the joint. So these anti-inflammatory properties are really important. There's also antioxidant benefits. There's, there's a few different compounds that, that have been identified as being helpful in, one, in this way. One of them is fucoxanthin, which is a carotenoid found in edible brown seaweeds. And it has demonstrated these really quite powerful antioxidant effects. So again, a lovely inclusion in the diet. 
Now, this brings us to low thyroid function. And I think this is a, a really important thing to be aware of, that the seaweeds do contain high amounts of iodine, some more than others. Bladderac, for example, was considered the most therapeutic or effective of the seaweeds for low thyroid function. But really all seaweeds are gonna provide a, a fairly good source of iodine. And why this is so important is because in the UK, there's, it's become recognised that there is this kind of fairly widespread iodine deficiency. Now, it's not really a new concept. Iodine deficiency in the UK, and in fact, many countries in the world, was identified kind of in the, the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. A, quite a number of countries, you know, the US, Australia, New Zealand, fortified their table salt with iodine. So you got iodized salt, and that, that was the, the avenue they took to address this widespread deficiency. That didn't occur in the UK, but actually there was a change in farming practices. And what happened is that iodine was added to cow's fodder because it was identified that cows were low in iodine. Now that has then, then transferred through to dairy products. So people within the UK and quite possibly around Europe, the iodine level started to improve, but it was via consumption of dairy. Um, interestingly, iodine was also used as a, a disinfectant agent in, in dairy manufacturing plants, dairy factories, and that kind of made its way into the food sources as well. So up until, I guess, more recent times, iodine deficiency was kind of considered to have not completely resolved, but to have certainly improved and on a widespread basis through the UK. Now it's becoming evident that there is actually quite a lot of people with mild to moderate iodine deficiency. The reasons aren't conclusively known, but it's considered, which would seem logical, that it's changes in diet. So people looking to alternatives to dairy. And looking for alternatives to dairy is probably for many people a very positive thing, but they need to consider how they're gonna get their iodine. So add some seaweed to the diet. Now, when it comes to thyroid function, of course, the thyroid is dependent on iodine. It is required in the production of thyroid hormones, so T3, T4. And without iodine, that, that simply can't happen. So if people have inadequate levels of iodine, it compromises the thyroid. And what is noted with bladderwrack is it's a particularly bioavailable source of iodine. But remember, it's not just the iodine. So there's loads of other minerals. There's amino acids, including tyrosine, and tyrosine is also needed to support healthy thyroid function. You, you again can't produce thyroid hormone without tyrosine. So seaweed is an all-round good supportive food for thyroid health. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe below so you don't miss any future content. To learn more about CNM or its courses, head to www.naturopathy-uk.com.